from the Walt Disney World Swan and Dolphin Resort in Orlando, Florida. It's the Q covering Splunk.com 2016. Brought to you by Splunk. Now, here are your hosts, John Furrier and John Walls. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are live in Orlando, Florida for Splunk.com 2016, seventh year of the annual conference. This is theCUBE, our flagship program from SiliconANGLE Media, where we go out to the events and extract the sin from the noise. I'm John Furrier, my co-host, John Walls. Good, good event so far, great. Great event Winding so down far. day one of two days of wall to wall coverage. Yeah, and, and we've been talking about so many of the positive things that are happening in the space. Unfortunately, also threat security, very much a topic, topic du jour here this week. And what this is talk about that is Adam Vincent, who's a CEO of Threat Connect, a threat intelligence platform. And uh, Adam, thanks for joining us. Thanks, John. Good to have thanks, you here, uh, breaking your maiden here on theCUBE, so it's always good to have yeah, you. Yeah, that's great. Thank you for having me. Yeah, tell me, and uh, you're part of the adaptive response team that uh, Splunk has put together. Tell us about that involvement and really about the group's goal at, at large before we get into a little bit more about what you do. Yeah, so uh, Splunk is a, a visionary in the security space, so we're a security company, and last, I think of February of last year, uh, Splunk came to us with um, this thing they called the Adaptive Response Initiative, which was uh, effectively a framework that allowed uh, companies like ours to integrate into Splunk and, um, and to fuse the goodness from each of our products that, that was part of that, that initiative and, um, and make Splunk uh, more powerful, but also uh, through that integration make each of our products more powerful. So it's a, it's a framework, it's not a product, but it allows us to uh, work as a team uh, and fight the threat together, which is uh, sorely needed in the security industry. So on the threat detection side, we're seeing a lot of huge news here. Tomorrow, we're going to see some announcements from Splunk on this keynote from what we can hear. But this is the top line issue. Yeah. Board level, security, it's not an operational thing like the normal Splunk is doing, it's goodness there. This is huge. Yeah. So what is Splunk doing and what are you doing with them specifically uh, in, in your business and how does that relate to customers? Yeah, so uh, the first and foremost, the, the issue is only getting worse by the day. Um, the number of technologies, the, um, just the, the sheer uh, volume of uh, mobile devices and uh, the technology uh, that we've all become accustomed to having is growing so quickly that security people aren't able to keep up with it. Uh, secondly, the security teams uh, at companies that are looking to defend uh, those assets are uh, you know, just not prepared for what they're up against. The threats have gotten much better uh, than, than they have been able to, to get at defending. Uh, and the number of technologies, although there's lots of great technologies out there, they're all fragmented. And that fragmentation has led to people and process and the technology um, being uh, able to be circumnavigated by the threat. So they come through the, the seam, so to speak, between the people, the process, and the technology. So what's the biggest issue that you hear from customers right now? Is it being overmatched on manpower? Is it a technology issue? Um, and what does Splunk do to yeah. level the playing field? The, the biggest issue is, is that people don't even know what they're up against. Uh, whether it's China, Russia, Iran, if you've been watching the news, you've seen all of the, the purported attacks from Russia on our election system. We don't even know whether we can trust uh, the election when it happens, whether you know, we're going to let, let the people decide. Uh, so we don't know what we're up against, and, and for that reason, we don't even know what to do to defend against uh, the attackers that we uh, need to defend against. Uh, so, you know, Splunk has a great idea in that uh, bringing together the technologies that someone already has um, is going to effectively make the people better at defending their organizations because they won't have um, 30 products that they need to log into and do different things in each one. They'll, they'll gain efficiency because they can uh, automate parts of processes that traditionally have been human driven. They can look at the data and they can make better decisions. What Threat Connect adds to Splunk, um, it, you know, Splunk is deployed and is, is looking at what's going on in the network. Threat Connect is effectively a knowledge base for threats. So we know uh, the, the capabilities of the bad guys and we know how to communicate that to Splunk. 
so that Splunk can go look for those things specifically. So think of it like a, a big database of fingerprints and DNA and facial expressions of all the different uh, people that might go after a bank. We have all of that knowledge that's coming through our platform from a variety of sources, some of which are other companies, some of which are open source, some of which are, are people that are just giving back to the community. And all of that information is being analyzed and then we're taking that knowledge and we're fusing it with Splunk's ability to analyze what's going on in the network. So think of it like the way the brain works. You have all these memories that you're using to make decisions. We're providing Splunk the knowledge it needs to inform decision making. And then the nervous system, whether it's Splunk ES or Splunk Core, is helping communicate that information out to the various products that are part of the um, adaptive response initiative. I kind of feel like that the way you were talking about the scenario here is that it's almost like the fingers in the dikes, right? That, that there are a lot of problems, a lot of intrusions, a lot of threats. Um, there are some good solutions in pieces, but you put one here and it pops here, and it's whack-a-mole to a really scary degree. Yeah, it, we're, we're uh, doing the best we can. Companies are not you know, sitting back in their lounge chair drinking a beer. They, they, they are uh, doing all the things that they need to do, but the problem is, is that um, they, they're ill-prepared to fight this fight. The, the attackers are um, highly motivated, are well-resourced. They have built technology to make attacking our companies easier. They have hired dozens of people to attack. Uh, and they have uh, strong business processes in how they obtain malware and use that malware against us. All of those reasons uh, lead to us being outmatched in many situations. So what we need to do is, is agree that um, you know, we're, sorely, uh, we're not prepared and we need to take what we've already done and take it up a notch and then figure out how to really change the paradigm uh, bigger budgets uh, is part of it, uh, more people is part of it, more technologies is part of it, but, but first and foremost, we recommend to our clients to just figure out what good looks like and what is going on. Splunk provides the ability to aggregate all of that data inside the network, and with Threat Connect, we can look for things, and those things can then highlight who's coming after that organization, and be uh, recommend re provide recommendations to them on what they can do to defend against those things. But the first step is know what you're up against so that you can plan effectively to defeat the people that are coming. All right, so you. tell me about why the Splunk thing's a big deal, the adaptive thing, we we'll can hear that tomorrow in detail. But in general, um, Splunk has provided a lot of value for people, but how do, do customers use the security aspect? Because I can see you're Splunking different systems of data. Yeah. So I can see some sort of nerve center concept. You're injecting essentially pattern recognition on signatures of, of threats. I get that. But there's always going to be new threats. Yeah. So you got to manage it on your end. You share that data. But So how does a customer deploy Splunk and how do you guys recommend and advise um, doing it from a security perspective? Yeah. Splunk is really revolutionizing the way that uh, people think about uh, using data to make decisions in an organization. Splunk Core has been doing that for many years on the business end, uh, on the IT end of the spectrum, and now that security has uh, become a bigger priority, they're looking at bringing those same approaches to the security part of the business. So first and foremost is just knowing what's going on and being able to analyze that information, Splunk being uh, a core technology there. Where the adaptive response initiative takes it to the next level is around being able to, to go beyond the ability to look at logs and actually start to conduct the security organization, the security products, almost like a conductor does with a symphony. So they're not just listening and then, and then going in the back room and waiting for the, the symphony to walk off the stage and tell them what they did well. They're actually providing proactive feedback uh, during the course of the music playing. And so- So prescriptive data uh, advice. Real-time uh, bi-directional input out to all of the different 
sensors and or control points in the security organization. And, and so you're not- Automatically automated? In, in some cases it can be automated, in some cases it can be human driven, but that's what adaptive response um, it can ultimately do for this industry is that when we, when we have a fabric of organizations that um, are allowing their products to work as one, you get the, the effect of fighting as a team within your security organization. Now take that to the next level. Some of what we've done in the Adaptive Response Initiative is we've allowed that team within an organization to share data about what they're seeing with other Splunk instances and other companies. So now you have the crowdsourced capability and you can take the, the level up for the industry, not just for a single company looking at just their data. And there's a lot of leverage on the data too. I mean, it seems to be that the organization can offload a lot of the tasks of data collection, um, the critical data, or identifying where the data is, which has a time component, right? So if you're going to be doing that real time or prescriptive, bi-directional, the data time factor is huge, yeah. isn't it? I mean, the, the attackers are penetrating our networks, um, and, and this is not something I'm making up. The, the Verizon Data Breach Report, it's been around for many years. People look at it like the, the Bible of yeah. what good looks like. Uh, back in the early 2000s, the, the Verizon Data Breach Report uh, stated that um, attackers were gaining access to the networks of the organization sharing data with Verizon uh, in days or less. Uh, while defenders were uh, detecting uh, in days or less at a much lower rate. Now, the rate uh, at which the, the, uh, the de detection deficit, the difference, was staggering. It was over 90% back in the early 2000s that, uh, that attackers were gaining access in days or less, and it was um, less than 10% back then that the defenders were de defending in days or less. Today, now almost 15 years later, um, the detection deficit has only increased. Attackers are up to 97% days or less penetrating our networks, uh, while defenders are like 9%. So they've gotten better in the last yeah. 10, 15 years than we have, and the, and the deficit is still so great. And, and as a security practitioner, this is the, the, the frightening piece of information, is despite all of the investments and the things that you see going on where organizations care more about security, based on that data set, we're still failing at doing our jobs yeah, that's, effectively. That's what gets me is that we're here, you know, and there, there are, I don't know, 30, 40 vendors here in different stripes, and people are talking about different flavors of security and different levels of uh, threat detection, intrusion detection, like, and we're losing by how much? So it's like a football team, right? We're, we, we're going out and we got, we got a lot of good players well, and yet we keep falling further and further behind. Well, the personnel on the field, they're shorthanded, what we were saying, but here's the issue. Splunk has the prospect of uh, accelerating the knowledge base of, the, of, the, of their customers because you know, even we were on theCUBE two weeks ago doing a, an event in Sand Hill Road in Silicon Valley. One of the guests was um, from this uh, cyber uh, consulting firm. 1.4 million jobs opening right now yeah. in cyber. Right. So like, right. one. We're shorthanded across the industry. Yeah. So it's kind of like data science, right? It's hard to get those people, but if you can abstract away machine learning and other techniques with data, you can essentially arm people to be as good as what a trained ninja would be, yeah. if you will. So like, I mean, this is where the value is. So how do you see that going forward? Does, does Splunk help companies be smarter? Yeah. There, there is no possible way that we can course correct on the human capital side. We need to make the assumption that we're going to be shorthanded potentially forever. And, uh, and that on the technology side, we have great technologies, but they need to be tied together. They need to be coordinated like the conductor does on the, in, the, in the symphony or like the quarterback does on the field. Without the quarterback, you know, there would be a lot of issues in running plays, right? Because no one would be there to call them. Uh, security as a, as, a, uh, as a part of an organization has lacked a quarterback from a technology perspective. The Splunk Adaptive Response Initiative is starting to uh, create that fabric, like I said, of products that are going to allow communications to go between them so that they can all learn from each other, they can all hear how each other are doing so that they can fight as one. 
Um, and then the next step beyond that is to be able to orchestrate them with knowledge uh, and, and decision-making capabilities that will inform decision-making. And humans can't be sitting there saying allow this, don't allow that, because back to your point, there's not enough of them to do that. So we yeah, have so you to use automate. The, so you use the collective intelligence of the data, surface that, and then have abstracting some signal from there so that you can make a decision. Exactly. That's where the heavy lifting gets done. Yep, that's right. Versus going out and, and, and finding stuff that you hope is right. Again, hope is the big word if you do it manually. You know, I, I, I was uh, involved in, in the wireless industry for a number of years and there was always a, a, a huge tension between the industry and government when it came to information sharing. And, and a lot of restrictions from this and some other federal agencies about what you can and what you cannot share. Do you have those same kinds of frictions or tensions between you know, what government's allowing you to, how you, they let you converse and what you can share and what you cannot share? So there's been a, a lot of change in this area in the last 12 to 18 months and that the government has um, made it much easier through legislation to share cyber threat information um, public, private. Um, so the government is sharing data with private sector, uh, and private sector sharing data with each other, and there's some carve outs that allow you to, to get away if you, know, if you don't report something uh, in the right way to the SEC. Um, but the bottom line is despite some of the legislation, there's still um, you know, not enough happening. Where, where I'm excited is that I see more grassroots sharing than I ever have in the industry. So companies are coming together and they're fighting together um, around uh, their industry, around their geography. States within the United States are working together now, uh, allowing private public corporations to share incident data in a sanitized way. Um, we're seeing more and more automation that allows uh, Threat Connect and Splunk at one company to share some data with, uh, with a cloud service that will then share it with another company that uses Splunk. So now what this company You're a found, federated sharing platform, Splunk is. That we provide that for Splunk in that. I would agree. I see this all the time. Re more recently than ever, the organic sharing is up. And I think what I see and what I hear you guys talk about and you're validating it is the downside of fraud is so massive that it's in everyone's best interest to share. Mm -hmm. And I think it's, this is where the beginning of them saying, hey, I might take a hit on compliance, but that is a risk management decision. The real threat from a cash perspective, fraud, hacking, I mean, it's just, Brand. the numbers are off the chart. I mean, the order of magnitude of consequences. And never mind the psychology, and who wants to be the CIO that says, I was the guy at Yahoo got hacked. Yeah. I mean, this is the, the psychologies in yeah. favor of sharing and the ROI. And, and no one will hire that person again because of the, <laughs> the insurance liability of, you know, if I hired that, that person, I'd be always worried that if I got hacked, that people would point at that and say, well, you know, why did you hire the person that failed? Yeah. Their, their he was a skipper of the Valdez, hits the iceberg, and you know, <laughs> exactly. no way, never gets another gig again, he's done. <laughs> yeah. um, no, but that is a real, that's a real thing. I mean, and that's, but again, this is a trade-off. Data sovereignty and data management is now under siege from this, this one threat trend. Okay, so let's talk about Splunk. So how does Splunk do that? Do they have the capability to do the management of sharing? How, do they actually have that in their product? Are we going to hear that tomorrow? I'm, I'm hoping they'll tell you that we do that for them. But <laughs> um, I mean, Splunk is a, So you provide a, that a, piece for Splunk? We provide the capability to allow Splunk instances uh, to share cross-company through Threat Connect, which is, which is provided as a cloud cross service. Cross-company or cross-companies? Cross-companies okay, or well, industries. In, got or, it, yeah. And so uh, Splunk is a very powerful on-premises product yeah. um, that now in, the, in recent days, I think you know, in the last year, has moved into the cloud, um, but it's still customer-specific cloud instances where uh, Threat Connect is more like uh, LinkedIn in that regard in that we have uh, an infrastructure set up around the idea of thousands of people collaborating in real time around the world, yeah. integrating their technologies in an automated way to allow one company to work uh, with another across products. One company buys FireEye, another buys Palo Alto. We still can allow them 
to uh, gain from, from those two products where otherwise you're stuck always buying FireEye and then coordinating another FireEye product. Well, Thread Connect, you guys are onto something really big here and we've been identifying it on our team, on our research side of Wikibon, where there's a social network developing in this community. When I say social network, I mean like people from different companies actually using tools oh, absolutely. amongst themselves as if it was like Facebook for security people. Yes. You know, there's, a, there's direct connection issues, there's yeah. how, who's got what circuits, am I using the internet, uh, what software am I using, so complete new category. I mean, is this a big trend? Do you see this? Yeah. Am I, am I on, on target here? What's your thoughts I, on that? I think Splunk uh, believes in that vision and, the, and they would consider what they've built as a product a, a platform that allows people to uh, create their own innovative ideas on top of that platform. Threat Connect has created a very powerful capability on top of Splunk. Splunk was a visionary in creating a platform in the first place, similar to what you get with your, your iPhone, your Android, and your laptop here. Um, these <laughs> companies didn't say, we know best, we're going to create a single app for you to use. Uh, so platform is definitely key to changing the paradigm in security. Um, next is getting evangelism in the community to solve problems. The threats are doing this in that they're working together to build malware, sh share malware, share best practices with each other. Uh, we need to do the same thing as a security industry. A yeah. platform is definitely the core to that, but, but the apps that are built and the knowledge that is shared and the ability for you to create a process and then give it to your business partner for them to automate something. Those are all the evolutions of the platform that are still evolving. Yeah, and it's, it's early days too. I mean, I think if you take the Threat Connect and now this direct connection between companies, you're really weaving a social network fabric of peers. So the wisdom of crowd, if you will, kind of kicks in Absolutely. with data. Mm -hmm. I Absolutely. think that is, um, to me, a big, a big thing I, I would see as an enabler. Mm -hmm. And again, Splunk and you guys working together. Who else has that solution? Or is it, is there, uh, is it still siloed by FireEye here and that doesn't work, I got to put it into some sort of federated data model? Yeah. Everyone in the industry sees the power of data and has brought that to their product. You know, name a security company now that doesn't say that they're Intel driven or data driven. It's, it's not the case anymore, everybody is. The difference is being able to coordinate across products with data uh, and, and the, the value of data it doesn't need to be explained, but the value to security people is still evolving. And, uh, and so it has to be cross-platform. Not everyone uses FireEye, and it, most companies use multiple products to defend their organizations. And, and some of them have a great deal of overlap. The, the ability to work together and bring that data set back to a, a shared platform like Splunk, the ability to take that data, analyze it, and then take some of it and, and share it across your supply chain or your business partners. Um, the ability for them to automate the ability to take that data and process it and put it into their Splunk instance and then go hunt for it and if they see something, provide back some value to the human beings that says, I already did all the work for you, this is bad, go do something. Um, that's the evolutionary step that we're at. And, uh, and it's going to take time to get there, but yeah. the Adaptive Response Initiative and uh, Splunk's platform at the core is taking us down that road, and, 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 but they do need a community around them. They can't, they can't uh, get to that vision alone. Well, there's also other, another factor to the buyers of the technology, your customers, they're, being, they're buying everything, right? Yeah. So they have a sprawl issue going on with what they're looking at, whether it's tire kicking or implementing, well, meanwhile, there are organizations like Swiss Cheese getting attacked. Um, is when are we going to get? When are we going to get out of that phase of throw the kitchen sink at security? Right um, now, we're in that phase now. You think I, we are right now? Uh, most companies have stopped buying the shiny object and have started rethinking their architecture and how they're building their security program. And they're looking to a platform like Splunk, Splunk to be at the core of that uh, evolutionary direction. It's kind of like Splunk has evolved into the natural solution since it's already being used, so it's a new way of doing it. Mm -hmm. Enabled by where it came from, not necessarily how it was built. Yeah, it's interesting, were, right? We were playing whack-a-mole before, and now we actually have a strategy, and we're, we're actually implementing towards a plan. 
Adam, thanks so much for sharing the story. Great stuff. Security is hot. I mean, it's, <laughs> if you're being overmanned and overteched out by the hackers, you got to have adaptive security. I'm going to hear a lot about that tomorrow in the keynote. We'll be broadcasting it live on theCUBE as well. More live coverage from day one at .com 2016 after the short break. Celebrating.